With more people moving into cities and increasing CO2 emissions becoming the latest threat to our existence, smaller cars might be one solution. Some of the following 10 cars are so small that many might be the better word. Amazing. Number 10, the Heinkel Combine. After World War II, Germany wasn't exactly awash with resources. They therefore had to get clever by making do with less. The solution? Use three wheels instead of four. Enter the Heinkel Combine, a three-wheeled microcar designed and built by Heinkel Flugzugwerke. For you history buffs out there, that's indeed the same company that made bomber planes and invented liquid-fueled rockets and turbojet-powered planes for the Luftwaffe during World War II. Banned from making any of that anymore for obvious reasons, they turned to bicycles, scooters, and this microcar, which went into production in 1956. Measuring 100.4 inches in length, 53.9 inches in width, and standing no more than 52 inches tall, never had a less threatening vehicle been made, let alone by such a threatening brand. Which was probably why they sold production rights to the Irish in 1958. Sadly, the Irish were lousy car makers, so they lost their production's license shortly after. The British and the Argentines bought the rights in 1960 and continued making them until 1966. In case you're wondering how to get in, you have to lift the entire front, climb in, and slam it shut after you. Number 9. Peel Trident The Isle of Man is a tiny British island whose flag is made up of three joined legs, which probably explains our next microcar. A more toy-like version of the Heinkel Cabine, it's also a three-wheeler that can seat two people, making it look suspiciously like a bumper car with a bubble on top. First released in 1964, the original measured 31 inches wide and 73 inches long before they came up with a new model the following year. Did they make it bigger? Sort of. They kept the length, but added another 8 inches to the width. No doubt because post-war rationing finally ended in Britain. Weighing 220 pounds, it was capable of a whopping 28 miles per hour for 100 miles on 2.8 liters of gas. Given the price of gas back then, they said it was almost cheaper than walking. Sadly, it also made it to Time Magazine's list of the 50 worst cars ever. That probably explains why they stopped making it in 1966, though it made a brief resurgence in 2011, in case you're interested. Number 8. Tata AirPod Cars that run on compressed air have been around for a while. The French were the first to have them in the late 19th century. Others tried to jump on the bandwagon, but they've never matched the power and speed of gas-powered cars. Enter Luxembourg's MDI. They came up with the AirPod in 2009 and tried to market it for $10,000. Despite its environmentally friendly specs and costing only a single euro per 124.27 miles to run, it didn't fly, if you'll pardon the pun, because of its top speed of only 49.7 miles per hour. Enter Tata Motors Limited, India's largest automaker. In 2017, they licensed MDI's AirPod, pending a few changes. The Tata AirPod now weighs under 2,000 pounds and should cost Indian consumers only $1.07 per 124.27 miles to run. Though it runs on compressed air, it still produces the same emissions as electric cars and doesn't use a steering wheel. It uses a joystick. The current model is 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet long, more than enough to seat four people. Tata says it should have a commercial model available soon, but refused to commit to a specific date. Stay tuned. Number 7. The Luminio Smera What do you get when you combine a car with a motorcycle? Something only the French would think of. From either side, it looks like a regular car until you look at it from the front or back, in which case it looks like half a car. By European standards, however, it still qualifies as a full car because it has four wheels. The Luminio Smera is an electric car that weighs a little less than a thousand pounds with its 16 kilowatt electric engine. Measuring 8.2 feet in length, 3.14 feet in width, and 4.7 feet in height, it has another fantastic feature. It tilts on corners for up to 25 degrees. Don't let that size fool you, however, because it can fit two people with room to spare for groceries and other stuff. It's powered by a lithium-ion battery pack that can run at a speed of 110 kilometers or 68 miles per hour for up to 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles on a single charge. Sadly, after selling only 10 of these, the company declared bankruptcy in 2013. Number 6. Brooch Mopetta 
Going back to Germans, microcars, and three wheels, there's the Bruch Mopeda, named after its easy to pronounce designer Egon Bruch Farzumbau, which explains why everyone just calls him Bruch. Legend has it that it was designed and built in a single day. What makes the company especially unique is that they do this stuff not to produce, but to license. The Mopeda made its debut in 1956, and there was talk of having Opel churn them out. 14 were made, each a three-wheeled roadster powered by a 50cc, 3cu inch ILVO V50 engine with a pull start and an integral three-speed gearbox. It isn't for romantics, however, because it can only fit one person and can drive at a top speed of about 45 kilometers or 28 miles per hour with an average fuel consumption of 111 miles per gallon. And its size, five feet, nine and a half inches in length, three feet in width, and three feet, 9.25 inches in height. If that's your thing, they now sell a licensed copy, but one powered by a modern Honda automatic engine. Number five, Renault Twizy. Want an actual microcar that's environmentally friendly and currently available? Then the Renault Twizy's for you. So long as you don't mind being seen in something that looks like the love child of a futuristic golf cart and a personal mobility device. First sold in 2012, the current model measures 91 inches in length, 47 inches in width, and 57 inches in height. It sells for about $10,000, but that price doesn't include the battery pack, which is leased on a monthly basis, complete with roadside assistance. They come in various models, so speed and distance will depend on what you pick, together with the accessories you choose. That said, the average range for one of these bad boys is 61 miles on a single charge. If you're 14 years old, in France, Italy, or Spain, and are interested, go for the Twizy Urban 45. They'll let you drive one of these on a special license. For those of you in the Americas, they've become available in some countries and U.S. states, complete with tax incentives in some areas. Number 4. Myers Motors NMG Ever fantasized about riding around in a banana? Then look no further than Meyer Motors NMG's Sparrow. Though fans prefer NMG, the designer may not admit that they had bananas in mind, but how do you explain the shape and color of that thing? It looks like the Heinkel Cabine after going through boot camp. The original design was called the Jelly Bean, later modified to the current Pizza Butt model. Pizza Butt because it was designed for Domino's pizza deliveries. In other words, it fits only one person, but the good news is you can also fit a couple of pizzas. Another three-wheeler, the Sparrow is 96 inches in length, 48 inches in width, and stands 57 inches tall. Depending on your budget, you can choose between a 20 kilowatt, 156 volt DC or a three-phase AC electric motor, which can give you a range of 20 to 40 miles at a top speed of 70 miles per hour. Price varies per US state, which may or may not offer tax incentives for buying one of these bananas. I mean cars. Number three, BMW Isetta. The BMW tells you it's German, but the Isetta tells you it was Italian built. Impressive though that sounds, it has its limitations. For starters, you can't reverse. The good news is that it's so light, you can simply step out, pick it up, and flip it in the direction you want to go. First released in 1955, it rose to fame because it was the first mass-produced car with a fuel consumption of 78 miles per gallon by U.S. standards. Then again, it's only 7.5 feet long by 4.5 feet wide and stands at only 4.52 feet tall. Different countries got their own license to produce their own versions, but stuck to the basic dimensions. France made the VLOM, Argentina the De Carlo, and Brazil the Romy Isetta. This bubble car runs on a 236cc split single two stroke motorcycle engine and could reach a top speed of 31 miles per hour in a whopping 30 seconds. And its top speed? About 47 miles per hour and up to 1,000 miles on a single tank. Not bad for something so tiny, huh? Number 2 Peel P50. According to the 2010 Guinness World Records, this is officially the world's smallest car. As with the Peel Trident, it was built on the Isle of Man and was first released in 1962 before production stopped three years later. As with the Isetta, it too goes without reverse gears. But maybe when your national flag is made up of three legs, such things aren't a consideration. Its dimensions? 52.8 inches in length, 39 inches in width, and 39.4 inches tall. The original ran on a DKW 49cc 4.2 horsepower fan-cooled engine which produced a whopping top speed of 38 miles per hour. Despite its limitations, it did acquire a fan base, so they released a copy in 2011, but one that runs on a 49cc 2.5 kilowatt 3.35 horsepower 4-stroke engine. 
lovers of Mother Earth can opt for the 2.3 kilowatt, 3.08 horsepower, brushless DC electric motor. Whichever you pick, you get a top speed of 28 miles per hour. If that's your thing, then good news. They're road legal in both the US and Europe, so enjoy. Number one, P car. If driving a banana isn't your thing, then how about peas? Okay, so this one isn't commercially available, but given the trend for smaller and smaller cars, who knows? The P car was featured in a bird's eye commercial to demonstrate how vegetables eventually lose their nutritional value. The car and commercial was envisioned by Asylum FX and was a well-documented build. It's also a great representation of what happens when you fart in a small car. The producers used a Honda engine and was made with fiberglass, achieving a top speed of over 60 miles per hour as it deliberately fell apart. If the 3D specs are correct, it can seat a single person rather comfortably. So long as it doesn't actually fall apart, I'd consider riding in one. Given how most of us drive alone, you have to admit, some of these cars are a great idea. Would you drive any of these cars, let alone own one? Let me know in the comments section below, and thanks for watching.